friends. So I shouldn't say friends. Hello, me. Um, today is January 2nd, 2024. And I'm about to go and have a hysterectomy. Um, it is currently 5.26 a.m. My surgery is scheduled for 7.30 a.m. Um, my husband is here with me. And, um, yeah, honestly, I don't know how to feel. Like, I'm not, I'm not nervous or anything. Um, yeah, I'm not nervous. I don't feel like any sort of way about it right now or anything. Um, here's this guy. Yeah, I don't feel nervous or anything like that. Like, right now, I just feel a little bit gassy and I feel ashy. Yeah, that's I've, probably from nerves. I've been having to um, take, well, I shower twice in the morning and in the night, at night. And I could not, since Sunday, put on any, my lips feel so tight. <laughs> I couldn't, since Sunday, put on any lotions, deodorant, anything like that. So I have just been like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for three days I couldn't do anything. But um <sighs> laughter is good for the soul, huh? But yeah, I'm I'm really <laughs> <laughs> Y'all I'm real ashy. I can't take this. I couldn't put on any lotion or anything. <laughs> but my surgery is scheduled for seven thirty. Um I don't know what to expect. I don't know what my pain level is gonna be like. <laughs> I don't know what my pain level is going to be like. Um, recovery time, I'm supposed to be out for. <laughs> I'm supposed to be out. <laughs> for like two to four weeks. <laughs> Stop, people probably think we want something. You do it too much. <laughs> it's supposed to be two to four weeks but I honestly feel like I'm going to get bored <laughs> we're not um, being able to go to work <laughs> he's supposed to have my back now he just now he just yes <laughs> yes ma'am hey, me it is January 2nd still, 4.58. Um, 
I did not bother recording while I was in the actual room. Um, just because I was in the hospital. Um, they had hooked me up to an IV. I had it in the top of my hand here. And it was actually kind of sore. And I just didn't bother um, getting hooked up. So, I mean, picking the camera up. So they um, ended up drawing my blood from my IV site. Um, the doctor just wanted to make sure that I wasn't anemic or anything. Here's my little friend. It's the neck breast thing. I got it um, for Christmas from work, and it definitely is coming in handy. But um, So they wanted to take blood just to make sure that I wasn't anemic. They checked my blood pressure. My blood pressure was high. But I told her I was sure that it was just due to nerves. I didn't feel nervous, but I guess my blood pressure said otherwise. Um, so they did that. I had to take three pills. Um, and I sat for a little bit. My doctor ended up coming in. My husband and I, we watched like a half episode of Family Matters. And um, he had to collect all of my stuff. So I had stuck my cell phone in the bag, so that's part of the reason why I didn't record either. My doctor came in and just reiterated what was going to be done. Um, after he reiterated and he just came in, I was like, we're going to do the hysterectomy. We're going to take your tubes and everything, but we're going to leave your ovaries. And then he made sure to tell us no smooching. <laughs> um, because it's eight uh, eight week recovery. So then he left. Um, anesthesiologist came in and introduced herself to me. And she was just confirming, um, you know, what I was getting done and just telling me what was going to happen. Pretty much they were going to give me um, some sort of medication. It was still going to keep me alert enough to slide from one bed to the operating table. And um, after that, they were going to put me under and I was going to get intubated, which I did because my throat is hurting really bad. Um, she asked me to open my mouth as wide as I could, stick my tongue out. I guess they just wanted to see what they had to work with. I knew it was going to be a problem because I can open my mouth like really wide and look in the back of my mouth and I can see my tonsils. So I figured, you know, and I only say that because my children... I don't know if they just have big tongues or what, but when I ask them to open their mouth and stick their tongues out, I can never see completely in the back of their throats. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, out there. Um, after that, we sat. We we started watching Catfish, and so we watched some of that. And then I remember two more um, people coming in. And they just told me that they were going to be in the OR um, assisting. So, they um, came in and introduced themselves and wanted me to confirm my information, like my name and my date of birth. Um, so, I did that. And then she had this little syringe with her, and I didn't know what was going on, but that was obviously the medicine that they were putting in my IV. So, they went ahead and put it in there, and they told my husband that he could go um, back in the waiting area or whatever. But he had to go back to registration because they had everything wrong on the paperwork. Like, they had my zip code wrong, they had my husband's name wrong, and the wrong phone number. So he was going to go handle that. Then I remember them wheeling me back. I remember getting into the operating room, and I remember them asking me to slide over to the table. And the lady asked me to keep sliding until I, like, felt her. Then a lot of people were just, like, moving around. And then they, um put I don't know if they put something else on my IV or not I don't know um the reasons for them putting this on the top the IV on top of the hand because when they do a laparoscopic hysterectomy which is robotic they strap your arms to your side so they did that um and they put um they didn't strap me while I was awake but they put a mask on my face and I remember them asking me to take in deep breaths and I was, but they didn't have it fully on my face. They just had kind of like it to the side and had the, the air, I guess, coming through the gas. And um, 
I'm sure I was taking deep breaths, but it wasn't working. So I remember somebody coming and pushing it to my face and then was like, take deep breaths. So I'm taking deep breaths. And then after that, still nothing. I was still awake. And then somebody else came and pressed it to my face and was like, okay, take, take deep breaths in and out. And so I started taking deep breaths in and out. And I don't remember anything else. Um, I remember waking up. And um, the lady was like, you're, you're finally waking up, honey. And I was just like, yes, I'm like, my throat's hurting. And she was like, that's to be expected. You were intubated. I'm like, I really have to pee. She was like, well, honey, he emptied your bladder. Um, You had a catheter. There's nothing in there. I was like, no, I feel like I really need to pee. And she was like, you want a bedpan? And I'm like, yes. So she asked me to lift up some to get the bedpan under me, which I did. And then when it was time to pee, I couldn't pee. And she was like, well, gravity might help you. Or whatever and I'm like okay um she's like so when they take you back in the other room um you can use the bathroom I'm like okay so they took me back in I told the next nurse like I needed to use the bathroom and she was like oh well they said they took out you know so many whatever I don't know how much liquid I had in the bag because <laughs> I'm like but I pee every second I'm like I have like a baby bladder and I really feel like I need to pee and I said honestly I don't know if it's cramps or if I have to pee. So I got up. She helped me up. Walked me to the bathroom. And I told her I couldn't squat. I was like, I don't sit on toilets. I squat. And she's like, oh, no, you can't do any squatting. So she put down two of the um, toilet seat covers. And I sat down. And I peed. And she was like, oh, you did good. And I was like, thank you. Because she said usually it takes a couple hours. For people to actually empty their bladder but i peed and i walked to the bathroom so they were just like i wasn't going to another room i was going to go home and i was like that's fine and they took me back in the room i stayed in the room for a little bit and then i had to pee again when well, she told me she was going to come back with my discharge papers so i was sitting there holding myself waiting for her to come back and then when she finally did come back with my discharge papers um, I told her, I was like, yeah, I have to pee again. And I wanted to pee before I got in my car because I didn't want to run the risk of wetting in my car because I just felt like I had to pee. And she uh, took me back to the bathroom and I let loose. Like, <laughs> it was like the floodgates opened up and I peed really good. And she was like, oh, yeah, because she was telling my husband. Because I think the first time my husband was in the bathroom with us and he helped me get up off the toilet and everything. And she told him this time he was going to go get the car. And um, and she was getting me in, in the room to discharge me and get me in a wheelchair and stuff. And she was like, oh, yeah, she peed real good. She did really good this time. And she's like, yeah, you did really well. She was like, You're, that's the fastest I've ever seen someone go to the bathroom after, you know, getting up from surgery. So I did that. And then she was about to wheel me to the car because um, she had, I got dressed. They had helped me get my clothes on. And then she started to wheel me out, and then she realized she had left my IV in, so we had to turn around <laughs> and go back in the room for her to take it out. And then after that, wheeled me to the car. I got in the car. My husband stopped to get me some egg drop soup because that's what I had requested. And then he also stopped to get me some popsicles because, again, my throat is hurting really bad right now, but I'm just talking through it. So he got me some popsicles. I came home. I attempted to eat the egg drop soup, which burned my throat, but I, I fought through it and ate it. Anyways, because she told me it was good to have something on my stomach. And then I was drinking pineapple juice, which was a bad idea because it's so acidic that it was burning my throat. Then I actually ended up getting some water, and I drank that water, and that was good, and it was soothing. And then I went to sleep, and I literally kept getting up like every nine minutes because I had to pee because my bladder isn't fully emptying like it should. And it's difficult for me to like push. And so I've been getting up like every nine minutes to go use the bathroom at first. And then I just learned to just sit there, sit there for a few extra moments just to make sure that everything was emptied from my bladder. And that definitely helped. So that's a tip. If you have to get up frequently after having a hysterectomy, just sit on the toilet for a couple extra minutes to get everything um, emptied. So after I had been getting up every nine minutes, because I, I only know because I would literally fall asleep. My husband, he sits at the edge of the bed. He has a little chair. He sits 
down there at the foot, and the TV is right over there. Um, and so he was playing his game, and um, um, and then he would have just helped me to the bathroom, and then I would lay down, get under my um, heated blanket, which was the best gift ever. My 17-year-old bought it for me because I did tell him that I wanted a heated blanket for uh, after my surgery. I didn't want a heating pad. I wanted a blanket. So I got a heating blanket, and this thing is amazing. Definitely a great purchase. So, um, yeah, my eye, uh, my right eye is a little bit swollen. If you could see, it's puffier in the corner. Um, I think they have my eyes taped shut because I could see like tape residue um, around my eyes. So I think they have my eyes taped shut as well as my arm strapped down. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> they didn't tell me they were going to tape my eyes shut, but it's fine. But it's still a little swollen. Um, but anyways, my husband would get me up and I would fall asleep for a little bit and get comfortable with just no getting comfortable because I want to lay on my side so bad, but I can't. I have to stay on my back because I just know laying on my side is not going to be comfortable. I might get stuck. And I'm not trying to strain, like, my stomach muscles too bad. So I'm just laying on my back. Um, I'm propped up on a few pillows. And I have um, my little friend around my neck to help with prop me up further. Then I have a little small pillow here that's helping with that as well. This is the pillow that I took in the car ride so I could strap my seatbelt around it. So I didn't end up with too much pressure around my belly. But I had finally at one point got to sleep, I think, for like some hours. I ended up taking, um, I don't know what they gave me. My doctor said he was going to give me Percocet. The pill bottle says Oxy something, so I don't know if it is Percocet or not. I don't know what it is, but I ended up taking it because I thought it was going to help with the pain that I had started to feel and um, help me sleep a little bit. The pain was still there. I felt like it didn't work. Um, I'm still in pain right now. Um, it's kind of hard for me to take a deep breath. I have a lot of air in my stomach. I can feel it. And what's weird is every time I get up to go to the bathroom, it feels really, really weird. It just feels like I have a lot of like physical like air bubbles in my stomach, like moving around and settling. <laughs> the, the best way I could describe it is like, and Orbeez, some Orbeez inside a, a snow globe and you had it upside down and then you go to flip it right side up and it's just falling down and like settling. That's what I feel like is happening in my stomach. I guess it's just because it's empty space and the uterus is gone and the fallopian tubes are gone and so it's just like a big open space and I'm thinking things are moving around and just get um, it's just um Everything's settling, but I feel like I really feel the gas pain. Um, right now as I talk, every time I take a breath in, I have like a pain like in the upper part of my stomach. I got four incisions. I think I have like two on the right side, one above my belly button, one on the left side, and they're glued shut. And he told me that I could um, have a... He told me I could because I asked him when I can shower. And he said I can shower tonight, which is the day of my surgery. So he said I can um, shower tonight, and I'm excited about that. Um, they did say I just need assistance because my nurse suggested I shower tomorrow um, because she was like, you know, I need to have my husband. But my husband was like, we could shower tonight, and um, he'll just let me have the bench that's in the shower. So we're going to... Um, get in the shower later on tonight, which I'm excited about because one thing about me, I love my showers and I typically shower in the morning and at night. So I showered this morning before I left and I still wanted to get my night shower in. So he said I can shower just not to scrub the incisions and just let the, you know, soap run down across it. I haven't eaten anything since my egg drop soup. I did try to drink some of the water, but it's, it's not helping my throat at all. So my husband brought me a popsicle. 
um, he had to leave to go to, um, he's coaching a basketball team in the church league, so they have practice tonight, so he went to do that, and he also went to pick my baby boy up, um, Mike, from his practice, so he'll be gone for a few hours, um, so my daughter's here with me, but I'm about to text her and have her bring me another popsicle because the popsicle definitely helped soothe my throat so I'm going to do that right now I'm up because I'm forcing myself to be up because I've just been getting up, peeing and going straight back to bed and going to sleep so I just picked up the phone I picked up my iPad and I'm just in my bed um, just trying to stay up um, why? I don't know, because I don't have a reason to stay up. But I feel like I've been sleeping all day, and I haven't really been following her directions, because she did tell me that I was going to sleep and um, to stay hydrated, to drink. But I've been just sleeping and getting up and peeing and laying back down. I haven't been drinking anything, because I'm just trying to sleep. But for now, that's the only update I have. But this is a recovery day, mm-hmm. surgery day, surgery day, because I'm not going to say recovery day one, because it's not, you know, it's not a thing. I didn't get that. Shh. Could you try again? No. Um, I hate when that thing picks up because nobody was talking to it. But anyways, um, yes, yeah, so I just, like I said, got out of surgery. My surgery... I don't even know what time it started, and honestly, I don't know how long I was out because it didn't feel long at all. I just remember them, my husband leaving, and then the next thing I know, he was coming back, but he said that I was in um, a recovery room for a whole hour, for a whole hour. It didn't even feel like I was asleep for an hour because I don't remember anything at all, um, but I'm grateful. It's over. It's done with, and now the recovery begins. When I um, initially got out of it, I felt like, oh, I should be good, you know, in no time to go back to work because I feel like I'm going to be bored. My doctor has me out of work for um, two to four weeks. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll have to see, but I don't know why I was already thinking on day one that I could go back to work, and like next week, but... I'm in pain. It's not unbearable pain to where it's like I want to cry or anything. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, but I am going to pick up and do a little vlog tomorrow. Um, and just tell you all how the night went because I always get up frequently in the middle of the night anyways to use the bathroom. And so I'm sure I'll have to get up and I feel bad because... My poor husband has to get me up, and I've been trying to do it on my own, but he's, you know, advising against it because it's going to cause me to use so many muscles, so he's telling me not to, but, um, yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and go so I can browse, look at a little um, TikTok, and I'll end up on YouTube, and at some point in time, I may just upload these short clips to YouTube, um, and I will have to get on and tell my hysterectomy story, tell all all about why I had to get them and what was going on with me. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm extremely grateful for my doctor. He's amazing. And I'm extremely grateful for the nursing staff at the hospital that I had my surgery at. They were just amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go because I've been talking too much. My throat hurts, so I'm going to request that other popsicle for my daughter. But okay, you all will see me in the next vlog, even though I'm saying to me, but it's kind of a video diary for me and other people out there because I haven't seen a laparoscopic hysterectomy video in quite a while. But okay, you all be blessed and enjoy the rest of your um, day. Mm -hmm.